Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. Thank you guys for everyone that checked up. We were fine. We were just busy. These things happen in the life of a man that has tried. You know what? We were just busy and, and YouTube content creation is just a whole different type of energy that I'm still learning. But it's good to be back. It's good to bring you more content. I would. I have actually been putting together videos, especially all summer. I've just not been able to edit it. It's just. I will get there. You guys, you guys that know how to do these things already. Come on, pour the spirit inside me already. <laughs> but it's good to come back to you guys. Um, today I promised I was gonna bring you the part two of my pregnancy journey, um, which was gonna feature the post-pregnancy things and, and how that actually affected me and how I changed, obviously being the first time father. Well yeah, and that's what I'm gonna bring in tonight. Um, my pregnancy journey had two. Number one, I'm, I'm gonna be starting from one of the first things that happens um, after the baby comes, um, that's taking the baby home. Okay, no, that, that's the first thing, obviously. Um, I, I thought, I'm very sure I said that story already. If you don't know it, go watch um, my pregnancy journey video and then you'll see everything in there. First thing I'll talk about is bathing the baby. Um, First thing, I, 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 I've said it before, but I, I really want to stress and emphasize on the fact that fathers and husbands, please try as much as possible to be um, intentionally um, part of the journey of this pregnancy thing, of this uh, parenting. It's, it's so important. This is not a video for it. I'll, I'll do another video for that. But it's so important to be a part of the journey because it can be very tasking, especially on, on the mothers, on, on the wives. It can it can be draining the hand guys. And the thing called post-traumatic, um, post-pregnancy, postpartum, but oh, thank you. Postpartum is actually a thing. So you guys, actually, please make sure you're supporting and you're actually part of the journey. Um, so I'm starting from bathing the baby. Bathing the baby. We decided to bath the baby, I think, I don't know, um, a week uh, after, a couple of days after. Um, there, there's so much, obviously, traditional related stuff about when to bath the baby, how to bath the baby. You use black soap, you use palm oil, you don't. But yeah, we, we but I really can't remember the details of how, how that went down. But yeah, we did bath the baby um, and it was great. Um, it was interesting to see her, obviously, get into that whole water thing. Um, and Eli was so good, she she loved the water from the beginning. Yeah, obviously the occasional cries here and there, but she, she was great. I jumped into the thing, I like I jumped into bathing the baby, it was a thing for me, man. Like, it's not like my wife wasn't um, interested in bathing the baby, but I think I just I just took it upon myself to make sure I was doing that while she was maybe resting or relaxing or pumping or I'm doing the other things, getting together the bathing stuff. I just enjoyed doing it actually. And to be honest, she really wasn't that interested in it. That's how she's. So it was actually, it was great. It was a great experience having to carry the baby. So we were we were still in London and Yinka's mom was doing, was helping obviously, teaching us how to do stuff. And because she sometimes she wouldn't be home when we had to bath the baby, I had to remember that you had to bath the baby in a particular way, hold the baby on your laps. I don't it, see, it was just, it was a sport basically. So if you can do it, you have one star. But yeah, that was an experience. And I think every father, uh, every husband, when the baby comes, you want to get into that. Because then it helps you know when to jump in, when to help, when your wife is getting too overwhelmed. Yeah, you can do some of the smaller things. Um, number two, night shifts. Okay, because I was in London um, and I was still working Canadian time, it was great for me because we were six hours ahead or six hours behind, actually. So when it was night in London, it was just kind of closing to the evening in in um, in Canada. So I had, like, I was still working. So it was actually great for me because I, I could take care of the baby at night and my wife could sleep and, and relax and rest. And obviously when the baby wakes, I just give um, pumped milk um, and, and rock her to sleep. And I was just doing my work. It was, it was so great. It was good because I was sleeping during the day because of the time difference and I would I'd wake up like in the evening to start work and I think that was just great. Night shift wasn't that bad for me because um, I would, like I said, I was just doing it based on the time. But if you're in the same time zone, especially for, for instance, when Elia came back um, to Canada, when she came to Canada, um, 
we obviously were in the same time, time zone and then the whole night shift actually started staying up till 2.30 a.m. and having to wake up at 6 a.m. to go still go to work and it was it was tasking, let me know, it won't lie. It was, it was an experience. Um, thank God for grandmother saying, let, let's leave that another story. Like we will talk on who go on that day. But thank God for grandmothers and help and, and the village. Um, but night shift is a real thing. Get ready for that. Uh, number three, feeding. Okay, so now everyone, I think that there's been this debate here and there going on about feeding, about um, breast milk, um, a pumped, putting the milk in bottle or formula or when do you start giving solid? I, my opinion, like my, my own experience and plus what I think, I don't really think every, like every child has the same, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, follows the same pattern. I don't think every child follows the same pattern. I think some children would jump into solid a lot earlier than some other children. Some children would wean off um, the breasts earlier than some other children. Um, I don't think I, I see these things on social media so much about um, um, breastfeeding shaming or feed shaming or um, parents shaming or whatever that is. To be honest with you, I, I, I don't think that makes any sense. Um, there's some women that actually struggle with um, producing milk and lactating. I know there are, there are a lot of things. I know Yinka was eating some chocolate. I, I wanted to eat that chocolate too. I was afraid. I'm like, as you can eat it like this, uh, something else, but like there, there are things you can eat and then there are things you can actually um, consume and take to aid it. But some women actually still struggle. It's still a thing. So, guys, don't don't ever get into that bubble or don't get into that whole argument of oh, if you don't, yes, yes, scientifically it's been proven. Yes, it's a couple of theses out there saying yes, breast milk is super important. Yeah, if you can, when you can, if it happens. Glory be to God. If it doesn't happen, God is still the one that, that, that keeps our children. God is still the one that blesses our children. And we are praying people. So you, you can still speak into the life of your, of your child. That, that shouldn't be anything to make you feel sad about. And, and this, this is another real cause of post, um, postpartum depression. I keep saying post-traumatic. Postpartum depression um, that, that I know of. So yeah, no condition. For Eliah, feeding was a thing I got interested in from the beginning. Because I really wanted to understand how she was eating and I, I was big on that. I had suffered also in the past and it was one thing that I know that it was from very small was when I kind of got into that habit of not eating. So I really, I don't know, I was just icky about it. I just really wanted to know uh, what was going on and how that was going to affect uh, things. So yeah, we, we did feed um, breast milk and, and formula. She moved to formula sometimes. Elia was very icky. She really didn't want to go formula route. And then, but when she changed... She changed, like, that girl is just blessed. Let's just leave it there. Um, and then obviously when it was time for solid, she started to take it. And I remember her first time taking Amala, oh God. Um, it was one of our aunties that fed her Amala for the first time, I believe. I'm not sure, yeah. But there was one Amala experience that was just, uh, Eliya was just going on that Amala. It was something else. Um, but but I think, I think majorly, understanding how your child feeds and obviously just listening to them. Obviously they can't talk, but you can actually still listen to them. You can listen to their, their language and their body language when it comes to feeding. I'm just a guy, well, and I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> no, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just um, I'm just saying what I what I obviously have experienced in this first uh, journey. Um, socializing in COVID that was another thing. Obviously, COVID was available. Eli is a COVID baby, born in COVID season, um, and masks is a thing. She sees everyone wearing masks, she sees everyone using hand sanitizer, she sees everyone trying to social distance, and then we don't have the opportunity to go out um, every time to, to be with people, to socialize. But from time to time, we do try, we do go to the park sometimes. Um, when, when that, obviously we had a series of lockdowns, especially in Canada, first wave, second wave, third lockdown. So in, in those pocket times when people were open, she went to church a lot, she, Obviously, met her church family. She met a lot of people. Um, Elia naturally just—I I think it was just, it's just God's gift. She's just been really good with people. Um, it's not really been a struggle having her relate with people and have people carry her and things like that. But uh, that has really helped me a lot because of the kind of things I do. Um, most of the times, I have to be out or I have to be in meetings and stuff. And I can easily take Elia with me, and which is so good. It's so great, especially for the wife because then 
all that burden is not on her. She doesn't have to look after this and do this and do that. No, I can literally whisk her up, put her in a car seat. We're out. We have a good time outside. She can let people carry her. She can sleep off um, um, even in loud noises. She's just great. Um, and, and and I think that's one major prayer that we prayed uh, when we are obviously having having a baby or looking forward to having a baby that we wanted to have someone that was really social someone that could really be easy with people so that when we want to have date nights or when we want to go out we can easily say auntie can you uh, have your village person and there's a village that does it so and 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 we could actually go so yeah that, that's one thing to look out for um the ability to but it was a challenge um because of covid uh because of the whole um having to stay home having to be locked in I think there was a time we even had to isolate for a bit because we had a couple of symptoms. It wasn't COVID, but um, we had some sick, uh, some flu symptoms. So we had to isolate. So imagine being in the house for like seven days, not going anywhere, not doing anything. Like it was, it was a thing. It was a thing for me because I, I was just believing that kids of that age should be able to go out, and see people, relate, see the world, see outside. So sometimes I just used to be very icky, and I take her to the balcony and just raise her like Lion King to the sky. Man, this is the sky, yo. <laughs> but, but things like that. But yeah, COVID was a number, but it, it, we balanced it out one way or the other. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is um, falling sick. So I, I, I originally didn't want to say, like I, I didn't even put this down in my notes, but I just remember now. I remember the first time Eliya actually fell sick. Now, I, well, okay, she fell sick. And I think I, I have a video, I actually I have a video on that, but I don't think I, I actually narrated what happened. And so, so Elias started to, obviously she started daycare and she um, developed a fever. And obviously it was just normal fever, I think it was on a Friday. Um, and then, okay, we were monitoring it, it was fine. Uh, it was like a first day, first day in daycare. And she got back and she, was, she developed a fever. And I'm like, okay, was, I think it was Friday and then Saturday, she, she, like the fever was going in and out. You know, this kind of in and out. You wake up in the morning, you're hot, and the afternoon, you're fine. But she was still playing. So, every, and everyone immediately now, everyone instantly trusts everybody. Ah, she's fitting. She's fitting. A yellow shade, like, she's fitting. Everyone was saying she was fitting. So, I'm like, okay, oh she's fitting now. So, Saturday, it was the same thing. Sunday, we went to church. I think it was like the. The city was open then, so we went to church and it was the same thing, she was really dull, she was... So Monday, we were like, okay, let's go. So I took her in to daycare. As soon as I got to daycare, I checked her temperature. Now, nah, it wasn't going to work. So I'm like, nah, I'm not taking you there. I'm just going to take you to work. I'm going to have a couple of meetings and then I'm just going to go home. And we did that. She was cool, she ate a little bit in the afternoon, she played a little bit. See, at night, at about 8, 9 p.m., Ish. We're trying to get her ready at about 8 p.m. We're trying to get her ready for bed. And then um, my wife just goes, Oh, let's just check her temperature. And we were like, okay. I went, I got the thermo thermostat, thermometer, thermo, thermometer. Ah, thermometer. Yes, not thermostat. Thermometer, and then we tried to check. And her temperature was just, it, it was ridiculously high. It didn't make sense. You know this kind of temperature that don't make sense. And I remember how I felt. And the reason, I, the reason I say that is because obviously we did everything we needed to do. We took her to the hospital and everything and then they checked and it was croup disease and um, croups, Krebs, Krebs, was it Krebs? Krebs. Croup virus. Croup virus. Croup virus. Croup, sorry about that. I'd not see, I'd not see that I need it. So croup, croup, Krebs. Croup. Croup. She said it. You heard when she said, okay, croup virus. Um, and obviously we did everything that they just give an antibiotics, it was great. And the end, and the thing that, the reason I'm saying that is because of how I felt, because I remember the next day, I, like I worked from home the next day, and I called my I called my mom, and I was just saying, oh, that I love everything. Like, she could see the worry on my face, and then she's like, ah, uh-uh. do you know how many times you two were sick when you were small? So I'm something, that is normal. So, like, I could, I can't just imagine, like, the way I felt, was just, it was something else. And I don't know how many fathers are watching or how many mothers are watching. I don't know if you felt the same way. It was just, it was deep. It was like, I don't, everything was turning upside down in my stomach, in my belly. It was like, I know obviously my first child, yeah, whatever, whatever. But it was just something. And I don't think 
I don't think it's just that. I don't think it's because of my first child because every other time she's probably had a fever after that or something. I just feel the same way. It's just there's this deep thing connection between you and your child that I don't think you can ever want to miss. Um, it's so important to actually to grow this connection with your with your um, seed, with your child from very young age. But yeah, basically that's all that um, I'm gonna experience. One last thing, one bonus one I'm gonna drop is sleep training. See, sleep training is is another one. Like I, that that's that's even another ball game entirely. Everyone has that too many theories about how to do it. How I, I did it. <laughs> Wait, sometimes, see, my wife would keep saying I'm the one that's faulty liar because I encourage her to sleep in the bed. Like, somebody said once that when she's 18, she will go, like, when she's 18, she was like, literally, she'll get to, there, there comes a time in the life of a man and a woman that they just develop independence. So, I, yes, sometimes I encourage it, but I still try to get her into bed, um, into a crib, and get her to sleep, and sometimes I have to sing. Sometimes I have to stay there like hours just to get her to do. Sometimes I rock and rock. That's even one time I was trying to even enter the crib. So I think I saw it in the movie one time. Like you can enter the crib and sleep with them, but yeah, I was testing it, but it didn't work. But but sleep training is another thing. Um, some people do the hardcore one. I don't know the names. Some people do the hardcore one where they leave the child and let the child cry. Cry, cry what? Cry it out method. Cry it out method. Where the child cries and cries and then um and and then obviously the child will sleep. But I can't stomach that cry. Cry, man, shame me. That cry used to do me. So I have to. So sometimes we, we would break. We will be looking at it like let's. We we'll be looking at the camera like ah uh, ah. Uh, when we cannot take it anymore, we're like, oh yeah, come, come, come. But sometimes we did leave her for a couple of minutes and she would cry and sleep. And then she got really good at it. Um, she understood her cycle, so she knows when it's this time, she goes to bed. She might cry like two, three minutes, but now nah, Eliya is gone. She's really good with sleep. I love that. She got that from me. Not from my mom. Like, I'm never going to start that story right now. But she got that for me. She's really good with sleep. When it's time to sleep, she goes to bed. She does have her pocket wakes up here and there. But yeah, she's really good with sleep. And that's my pregnancy journey, part two, and some of the things that's happened post giving birth. If you have any other comments, if you have any other experiences as a father, mothers, don't comment, nice video, don't comment. It's the fathers I want to hear from because we really, really, really need to get involved in this whole thing called parenting and train up our kids. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed, you know what to do. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you share, make sure you like, make sure you drop a comment. It'll be good for me to hear what you want to say. And if you have anything you want me to talk about, especially in parenting, as a husband, as a father, please let me know. I will talk about it. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.